Hi, my name is Dong and I'm an animator and I've been working in the Japanese animation industry for a while and being in the industry for so long, I have seen many different people's animation works and layout. And today, I would like to talk about some common mistakes that I see newer artists often make. Obviously, this list is subjective and is in no way exhaustive. Also, many of the points I will be listing only really applies for the Japanese animation industry. And there are mistakes that I see even experienced animators make only for the reason that they are often moving between the Western and Japanese animation industries. A lot of these things that I will mention are also things that just come with experience. Remember to never fear making mistakes and that knowing when you are making a mistake is half the battle. Character and layout's perspective don't match. So I see this sometimes with artists that are just beginning in perspective drawing where the layout which the background has one set of perspective and the animation layer which the character are on a different set of perspective when they are supposed to be on the same perspective. This lack of cohesion can make your drawing look quite amateur. In this scene, we have a BG and a character's cell layer, but the more you look at it, the more off perspective it looks. First of all, the character's eye line doesn't match up with the perspective of the wall behind her, even though they are parallel to each other. Also, this is a slight low angle shot, but the character doesn't look low angle at all. Some ways to remedy this is to draw your rough drawing with what I call the cardboard box man method to establish the perspective your character needs to follow. Here I make sure that our box character and the brick wall behind them all match and share the same space as well as perspective lines. The six-sided cube can really help bring out the proper sense of perspective. After that, we can use our cardboard man as a guide and draw our actual character on top. Now this looks much better. We can check if her eyeline and shoulders match up properly with the background perspective. And yeah, they look pretty nice. Note that it is perfectly acceptable to have the perspective of the background be offset from the characters as it is natural that not all perspective lines match up in all situations, especially when your character is neither parallel nor perpendicular to your BG. But you have to do this with intent and you have to understand the requirements of the storyboards. Wrong notations. So this part comes with experience, but writing proper notations is an integral part of being an animator. Remember that the creation of a film is not an endeavor taken up by a single person, and you'll need to be able to properly communicate with the directors and the rest of the team by writing proper and easy to understand notation. With your animation cells, make sure that you're actually labeling each drawing with the layer letter and the cell number. A1 and A2, for example, here. The spacing diagram is also always written on the drawing that it ends on, so A2 in this case. And make sure that your spacing diagram is properly done as well. In the anime, it looks something like this, and here I have in betweens at the half, quarter, and eighths positions. I find that many newer animators and animators that have transitioned from Western productions tend to write these wrong or not even write them at all. Once that is finished, make sure to dictate the timing as well in your time sheet. I also find that newer artists have difficulty dealing with camera work notations like pans and trucks. And there's a video on this channel that goes over those as well. So take a look. Too many drawings. I see this sometimes with animators and often newer ones where almost every single drawing is a key drawing when it isn't necessary. The major issue is that if every drawing is a key, the final line work will have a flicker that is very noticeable and you're just creating more work for yourself and your directors. In this scene, there's a lot of drawings and there's probably a few we can take out. A17 here, for example, could be removed and placed with an in-between. And B6 here could also probably be better as an in-between.
There are also a bunch of drawings for our characters run cycle, and while we drew them all out, which is fine, in Japanese animation, we can also leave these to the in-between artists. So for the run, it would go key contact pose, in-between, in-between, key contact pose, and repeat. And here's a little tip. When doing the spacing diagram for a run, you can indicate that you want some up and down movement by drawing the spacing diagram like this. Again, drawing shouldn't really be a key unless it needs to be a key. Obviously with scenes with a lot of action, you are going to need many drawings. But for the majority of your scenes, just leave it to the in-between animator to draw those intermediate drawings. Weird timing. So in animation, especially in the Japanese animation industry, we generally animate on streets, meaning each animation drawing is exposed for three frames. We also animate on twos or ones when the opportunity calls for it. Animating on streets allows the production to keep the budget constrained as a fewer number of total drawings need to be made. As a rule, aim to keep your animation on streets unless there is a reason to not to. And when you do need to animate on twos or ones, go for it. I also see animators who time out their animation on fours before, and I feel that's where things start feeling like a slideshow once you get into the fours territory. The only place I would animate on fours is maybe with something that is in extreme slow motion. Copy and pasting animation cells is also something that I see with newer animators especially ones that started out drawing digitally and don't have much traditional experience animating on pencil and paper. As a rule, unless part of the drawings are meant to be a held cell, never copy and paste one part of the drawing to use for another. I've seen people copying a drawing, duplicating it, and adding a slight skew or other small change, and they would use it for a completely new animation cell. The rule of thumb is to always redraw. Retrace if you must, but never copy and paste. There is beauty to the curves of a hand-drawn line, and copy and pasting can destroy that. In my opinion, as well as most of all the senior directors here, copying and pasting creates poor quality animation. The only time that one could copy and paste is again when part of the cell is going to be a held drawing, where the parent is the drawing being copied and pasted from. In the Japanese animation industry, this is called a gose drawing. And that's it. I hope you guys learned something today. Thanks everyone for watching. This channel is supported by my patron members. And if you like to help keep this channel running, links are down below. Patron members get some unique content to them every month. Other than that, check out my social media and I'll see you guys next time.